I didn't take that last failure lying down, guys. We spent three days searching for gold and failing to find it. I'm not diving straight back in. I have played more. We have unlocked further characters, including old Wickerbottom here. She is not the one we will be playing with. We will be playing with the one I wanted to play with last time. Mr. Tom Hanks. Wilson, I'm sorry. I have made fire. That guy. Nobody is better suited to being cast away on a desert island shipwrecked than this guy. And you know what, with the main character who we played last time being named Wilson, who's the better man to follow that up than Tom Hanks who named his volleyball the very same thing. I'm just goofing off guys, this is Tom Hanks. I had to google this stuff about him but it's apparently true. Of course I knew he's very likable. Dude's America's sweetheart. It's a national treasure. Descendant of Abe Lincoln, and I guess in this game that makes him a better fighter and has type 2 diabetes, which means that some f sugary foods are less valuable him to him. Fascinating. But we are starting as Tom Hanks. And we are going to do this over. I'm going to make up for the failures of last episode, and we are going to... We're gonna do well, I'll tell you guys. In the in-between, I have broken my own record. I set a 14-day, two-week, I had a good run. And I did it with Hanks. So, I, I'm ready to go. I just died from that one, but it, it, it felt good. Uh, so I'm back in the game here. And we've got a new island, new places to explore, and uh, a new character to introduce to you guys. You, you obviously know Wilson, he's the the kind of poster boy of Don't Starve. Tom Hanks, future poster boy. Dude's a poster boy or whatever he wants to be. He's so beloved. I mean, played some amazing characters. You know, life is like a, a bushel of grass. It's itchy sometimes. Nope, swing and a miss. Life is like a, a bundle of sticks. Every once in a while you get poked where you didn't want to get poked. I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. Stop me from doing these stupid forest gump lines. My point is, it's Tom Hanks, and we're playing Shipwrecked. It's kind of cool. Dude, uh, I fell in love with that movie, Castaway. I think that was a Robert Zemeckis movie. And uh, I, I loved it. I thought he did such a good job. I hope that he grows the same beard in this, that he grows in that. This is, of course, a mod I downloaded from the Steam Workshop. Gathering us up some basic resources here, guys. And let's get an axe going. I wonder if I should have got a pick going first. No, I can make a pick now. We're all good. So I think, I think I've learned some of the tricks, but... If I haven't, please be nice to me. Okay, I'm gonna leave these flowers here until we need them. And you know what? We already have enough for a hat. Put the man in a hat. And uh, his likability means crabs don't run away from him. Watch this. How easy is that? Now, the downside is that, yeah, some foods are less good for Tom because of his type 2 diabetes. Okay, we are constructing. Last time, guys, it was gold that gave us all the trouble. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just leap to the hunt for gold. I'm gonna get us all set up on this island first. And once we've got, once we get some, you know, basics established, then we'll go out and look for gold. If we find it before then, so be it. But I'm not counting on that. Today we gather a little bit of food, lots of grass. If we can make a couple tools, all the better. You know, this game is a ruthless. It is incredibly difficult. All I did was just take my eyes off the, the ball for a minute or two, and you saw what happened. I, I went out into the ocean too late at night. I found some crazy bombarding. If you guys haven't seen episode 3, go watch it now. This, of course, is episode 4, but our fresh restart and a new restart for us. I hope that doesn't seem too cheaty to you guys. Uh, hopefully Tom's pros don't outweigh his cons. I want the game, of course, to still be hard. And you know what? If we can, can we build ourselves a machete? Not yet. What do we need? More flint. Okay, let's go and try and find some flint. Because I like the boat. I like the boat that you make from this jungle stuff, from the vines and the bamboo. I like that little raft. It seems pretty good. 
Uh, but we'll need some flint if we're going to be able to do that. Because I have yet to make... Wait. Can't make a pick either. Shoot. Okay, well, we make a pick first. And then we should have all the flint we need. I don't know why I always do that. I jump to making the axe. Wood isn't a terrible necessity. Uh, there is some flint. So let's make a pick. We'll go bust up a couple rocks. If we can find... There we go. We'll bust up a couple rocks. We'll get some more flint. We'll make a, a machete and we'll go... We'll go begin planning our boat. I get any flint out of that stupid... Get lost. That bell. I love that bell noise. It's telling you like, oh, look what you can do now. You know, guys, I, uh... I had a practice run, and I thought it would be nice if I could talk to you guys. I don't know if this game will afford me the sort of focus needed to tell a good story and play the game at the same time, because it is hard. But uh, if I could, I'll tell you guys one that happened to me recently. Now, my real-life job, uh, as you can tell by the size of my channel, I am not a full-time YouTuber. It is not my only, my only uh, source of income. It's barely a source of income at this point. Uh, but I work in a bar. I'm a waiter. I'm a bartender. I also manage there, but that sounds like I'm bragging about what isn't a job you would necessarily brag about. Anyway, the place I work is most days a lot like a restaurant. You come in, you order your food, you maybe have a drink, but the food is first and foremost, and then you pay your bill and you go home. Later at night, especially on Saturdays, it changes. It becomes a bit of a bar. And um, when it does, you know, it's more like dr drinks are first and foremost. And food becomes secondary, right? Let's find a little bit more flint. Come on, flint me up here. I can't believe, guys, it's already nighttime. Is this the flint we need? Yes. Okay, make the machete. We'll head down there. We'll, we'll start ourselves a fire. Ooh, do we build this kind of fire pit? I think we do. We build it down by the, uh, just by the edge of the jungle. I don't think we want to be in the jungle. There you go. Uh, and so, on a recent Saturday night, I was not the bartender. I was the person serving the other side of the restaurant, and my coworker is the bartender, and she honestly had her hands full. The bar was lined up kind of like two, three people deep, the kind of thing where you, you, you just have enough time to make the drinks of the people who are closest to you, and some people are just going to be left waiting. That's the way it works. Get lost. That's Tom Hanks, you stupid snakes. Oh, God. That's not how you attack. Move. Okay, I slayed them, and now they're all on me. Okay, well, this... So, yes, the bar is crammed full like this jungle is with snakes. People there, and she's, she could barely keep up if she had her full attention on making drinks, right? Sometimes it just goes that way. You get way busier than you think, and all you can do is pour rum and cokes or crack beers or whatever, right? So I've had that happen to me when I'm on the bar, and I know what it's like. And any little distraction, man, that can really throw you off. And she had this guy trying to pay his bill. And in Canada, we have debit machines, right? You, you guys probably have the same thing. I'm not talking about an ATM. I'm talking about... Uh, the kind that you use to pay your bill in a restaurant. It's portable and it's small. Uh, hack this thing down. Portable and small and the waiter brings it over to you. And in Canada, all our cards have these chips on them. So you put it in the bottom of the machine. You pick checking, savings, whatever. Um, if you want to leave the waiter a tip, you do that. And it's done. It takes the average person around, a, I don't know, a minute and a half, something like that, to do. All right, pick up all your cooked fish m morsels. Uh, yeah, it doesn't take long, honestly. It's a, a pretty simple process, and I rarely have to explain anything to anybody when it comes down to that stuff, right? So she had this guy at the bar, and I swear to God, the thing that normally takes about a minute, minute and a half, had taken him eight or nine. And she was beginning to lose her cool, because the whole while she's trying to make drinks and isn't realizing that he keeps screwing it up somehow. He keeps failing to... Uh, to complete the transaction, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, and so I jump in and I help out because uh, I want her to be able to get back to serving the people at the bar. So I go and take over. And you guys can tell from my demeanor. I'm polite. I'm easygoing. I'm not the type to pick a fight or insult you. 
but as time goes on, I swear to God, this guy's what's a checking? What's a savings? Do I have a pin? What is it? And I'm going, no, you, you must know your own pin. How do you get a card like this if you don't know your pin? And, uh, you know, he's going waiter, tip percentage, or tip amount. So confused, right? Now, I can cut the guy a break and assume he's, conf you know, just confused. But the more time I gave him, the more I started to think this guy just doesn't want to pay his bill. And so maybe, maybe I got a little terse. Maybe I, maybe I was, you know, just a little short with the guy. I'm not being rude or anything like that. Get away from me, you stupid. Let's smash one of these. Oh, that was a butterfly. I didn't mean to do that. Make him, make him, yeah, and then you just chop him to bits. Okay, snake skin, I'll take it. Butterfly wings, I'll take it. Oh, I don't, I can't carry any more stuff. Okay. Well, we still got our fire going. Let's cook some of these. Uh, so anyway, yeah, maybe I was short with the guy. Maybe I, you know, went, you know, treated him like he was a bit dumb because he seemed like he was pretty dumb at the time. It's possible I did that. Uh, so then, as I said, this place is a busy bar on the weekend. So I'm, I'm distracted later on in the night. The guy's paid his bill. I thought he was gone. Uh, I'm clearing a table. I'm leaning over, picking up a bunch of glasses, all that kind of thing. And the place is crowded, like I said. And uh, this guy walks behind me, just hits me, elbows me, drops an elbow right in the lower back. Now, I my first instinct is, oh, did someone accidentally bump me? Like, what, what's going on? I turn to look, and there's this guy. And I gotta tell you guys, I'm not the ma the macho bravado type. I'm pretty chill almost all the time. And picking a fight is not really my thing. And as a Canadian, I mean, I grew up playing hockey. We're kind of known as being quick to fight. And I've always wanted to... I mean, if you've been in a fight, you know you don't want to be in a fight, right? Okay, guys, we are setting out, by the way, in search of some gold. I didn't find any golden boulders on our initial island. And I'm just gonna see what we can find out here, okay? Uh, and so this guy, he elbows me in the back, and then by the time I turn around to go see if someone accidentally hit me in the back, message in a bottle? Okay, let's head back and check out our message in a bottle. Message in a bottle. Sorry, guys. Uh, so but I turn around and look, and this guy is pretending. Read this. What? What does that mean? Zoom in. Zoom out. Oh, there's treasure. Okay, X marks the spot. Okay, well, we'll work towards that. That seems cool. Empty, and we now have an empty bottle. What can, I wonder what I can do with that. Okay, let's go back to wherever we set up our base. And so I turn around, guys, and this guy is pretending he didn't just walk by and intentionally hit me in the back, which that gets me going a little bit. I mentioned I'm not a fighter, but that's such a wuss thing to do, to pretend that you didn't mean to... Oh, I, I wasn't me. I didn't do it. Before I can even call out to the guy to call him, you know, <laughs> the name that's going through my head, the bouncers. We get bouncers on Saturday nights. The bouncers are on this guy. They're talking to him. They're going to pull him out. His friend is going, you know, this don't don't try and throw him out because then he'll then he'll pick a fight and you guys will have to fight him and you don't want to fight him. He's a good fighter. And he's this little guy. I mean, he's not a whole lot bigger than me. I got to be totally honest. And, um, and, and, uh, and they put him out. And I had to think, guys, you know, I've mentioned, you know, a couple times in that story where I really got upset. I, I got a little annoyed, right? And if it was just me and that guy, I don't know what would have happened, but I'm so glad I don't have to be the bouncer. I'm so glad it's not my job to be the aggro one picking the fight. I can just sit back and do my thing because, guys, you, you think it's cool. You think it's smart to get, oh my god, if you ever actually been punched in the face, it's one of the worst things in the world. I mean, you really don't want to do that if you can avoid it. And that's that's just the truth. Uh, and so being able to be a bit more of a pacifist to not have to step up and defend my honor because I'm not that worried about that kind of thing, honestly, that that is a breath of fresh air. That is a little bit of relief, a little bit of freedom. Because there are people out there, guys, that will push your buttons and they will push you to the edge until you do something stupid, right? Now, if that were to happen, who, know, who knows what the effect is of me, you know, punching that guy in the mouth for hitting me in the back, right? I mean, I can, you know, you, you, it's, it, it's, just, oh, it's just never worth it. I don't know how I got out of this story and I don't know how I don't have an ending for it. Uh, 
We gotta go find that gold, don't we? Okay, let's, uh, let's get ourselves... Hey, can I make... No, let's get ready to make a thatch pack. See, this is what I worried about. Tell, trying to tell a story in the middle of this. And, uh... And losing losing focus on on the the game because this game will kill you so damn fast. Oh, I can't even pick up logs right now. Eat the damn petals. I didn't mean to pick any flowers until I really had problems with sanity, which I gotta tell you guys that happened so much last time. Sanity was a big issue in the practice run I did that record breaker where I went to 14 days. Man, I hope we can do that. I hope we can do what we've done in the past. I hope this can, you know, outdo that first little trio of episodes where, you know, the restarts are nice. It's kind of a treat in this game to be able to get an absolute fresh start in the middle of a series, that kind of thing. Oh, you just leave me alone, you damn snake. See, sometimes this, this is the kind of thing I was talking about, guys. Where you're trying to be nice, and then this, it just won't leave you alone, right? And you just want to turn around and just smack it silly. Right? Get your revenge out. What does that actually do in this game? That's good. I got one less snake, one less ba annoying thing to worry about, right? In real life, what does that mean? Do you actually change the way the person thinks? Do you make them so they're not such a, a dick when they're being a dick and you want them to stop? No, that almost never happens. What actually happens is that, you know, you make a horrible enemy with somebody... You know, you either you get hit and you fall and hit your head and end up in the hospital, or they do, and it's just... It's nice to be able to come into this game and take out that kind of stress on these dumbass snakes. Because uh, I sure as hell am not doing it. You, you know what? I just counterdicted myself so powerfully. I was just saying how great it was to not have to be the guy that picks the fight, and now here I am saying, God, I love being able to take out my rage. Oh, it's a... It's a strange world. Fish morsel. Eat it. Oh, I should have cooked that first, shouldn't I? The monster meat, guys, it'll help your health. Sorry, your appetite. But it hurts your health and sanity. You see the little red or green circles that pop up around there? So I'm going to try and avoid that stuff. And might as well get ourselves some more wood. And we go out in search of gold. Gold took three episodes last time. I'm hoping we find it by the end of this episode. So I'm going to be ready to go first thing in the morning. What is new? What is the new thing we can build? Traps. Interesting. Okay. Let's hit it. Let's hit the damn road. Uh, where'd I put my raft? Oh, that's Tom's face. Okay, the raft is this way. We'll hop on it, we'll see which direction the waves in the ocean are going today, and hopefully they can take us where we need to go. Yeah, every day the waves are going a different direction, and it's in your best interest to go with them if you can make it happen. See, Tom doesn't even need a paddle, this guy. So do we go this way? The waves are blowing east. I say we hop on this east wind. We'll head for that X marks a spot at some point in the future, but for now, let's take advantage of the tides. See that? We... It's not messing up my boat. I'm not getting wet because I'm hitting them uh, from behind. Another hockey term. And look at the kind of ground we're covering. Oh, see that one? I hit and I got wet. You got to be careful. You can't just... Oh, God. Okay, I messed that one up too. Just stay on course. There you go. This is how you do it. Don't get all your stupid stuff wet. Yeah, see, Tom doesn't need a paddle. He just powers this boat with his natural charisma. The dude's an American American treasure. He's the captain from Saving Private Ryan. He's the guy with AIDS in Philadelphia. He's Forrest Mother F and Gump. He's the guy with the amazing laugh in the money pit. He's just beloved. You telling me that man needs a paddle? I tell you, go to hell. Just, just spurned on by his charm and wit. You gotta love yourself some Tom Hanks. Maybe I'm going too far overboard. Okay, no room in the old inventory. That's a bad idea. And how have we not hit land yet? Still not hit any dang land. It's okay. Stay on. Straight course. I mean, we're in, we're in some kind of, like, lagoon. Look at these... These waters. There's no waves here. 
I swear, we must be missing a landmass by just ever so slightly. It's still early in the day, so I say we hop on these waves, we take them where we need to go. And we just keep going until we hit some land. We'll find a golden boulder, we'll head home. Now, when you get into the deep ocean, you see how we're getting? There's not just normal waves, there's double the height, double the speed waves out here. They, the waves that'll kill you, they get you trapped between two waves like a piece of ham and a sandwich. Oh, look, I have found... Okay, look what we have found, guys. Oh god, we are getting too wet. I have found some lighter... Lighter waters. Are we getting close to a landmass? It doesn't seem like it. Water way to go. Oh, you're so funny, Will Tom. Old Tommy boy, I almost called you Wilson. We're soaked, guys. Absolutely soaked, and I still haven't found a landmass. Coral. You know, if... I don't find one soon. Like, we're, that's starting to affect the sanity out here. Just being out here and not finding anything. Huh. I think we gotta... I think we gotta take a slightly different course back towards home because I don't want to... Oh! Thank the Lord. Okay, get me off this damn boat and let's see where we are. Okay, we're on a new island. Sick, sick, sick. So, what we need to do is make sure we have the supplies for a fire tonight. We do. And get some food to put on that fire. Hey, we found our first pigman. I found one last time around, but... Hi, Donut. How you doing? Stay away! I consider them like the hillbillies of this game. Golden boulder, please. Guys, in my practice run, I found one so quick. I found it day one. And that got my hopes up that uh, our first run was a fluke. And that golden boulders are much more frequent in these climates. And I just got unlucky. That is a freaky looking tree. Regular jungle tree. Just like any other jungle tree. Not going to fool me with that one. Guys, there's spider nests all over this place. This is a spot to set up if we can find... I mean... There's just a steady supply of the kind of stuff we need. Those rare resources that you get from these mobs. But we gotta find... Like I said, we gotta find a golden boulder. We're coming to the end of the jungle area. Oh, we have found a plane. We have found a plane filled with... Sweet potatoes. How cool. Okay. Well, let's set up our fire. And I think day three, that means this is likely the end of this episode, guys. We have got plenty of sweet potatoes. I'm I'm hoping I can leave them there for a while at least. Uh, slippery torch. All right. And we'll double check what's out on this island. Yeah, that's it. Just... Just plains and sweet potatoes. Dang. I think that means that this first episode is once again going to be one without gold. Guys, we are deep enough in that this day has come and it has gone. And that's happened now three times. We're almost into day four. I don't know where this golden boulder would be. Have I searched this whole island? No. Let's head up along this coast. We'll go as long. I'll make another torch just to be safe. And we'll just, we'll just run up this coast. And we'll see, maybe, maybe there's a boulder hiding here. I mean, they're glorious when you find them. They've got these streaks of gold running through. And they drop these beautiful little nuggets that become so valuable. Oh, we got almost no moon tonight, eh? I'll be relying on torchlight. This is way too scary. Way, way too scary. This, what am I doing out here? Fireflies. Okay, we'll light a thing on fire. That'll help the situation. Where are you golden boulder fools at? Oh god, spider nest in the dark. Spider nest in the mother effing dark. Oh god! Oh, it's a trio of snake fools. 
Oh, there are four. There's a whole ton of them. Give me... Give me daylight, please. Am I glad the night is almost over? Being chased once again by these snakes when all we're trying to do is get rich, get paid. Oh, God. Geeks, that is going to do it for episode four of Don't Starve. Poor Tom Hanks is starving to death. And we're going to worry about that in the next episode because time is up for this one. Thank you so much for checking out this fourth episode of Don't Starve and the first of our new run as Tom Hanks. I will see you geeks in the next episode. Geeks, what is going on? UTC here, giving a little bit of a shifty look to Dr. Amari. She's trying to get me to sit in this chair and enter Kellogg's memories via Nick's robot brain. <laughs>